NASA began the Voyager program in 1977 to explore our solar system's outer planets. The Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft embarked on their epic voyage, acquiring magnificent photographs and gathering crucial information about Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Their adventure, however, continued. After completing their initial mission, the Voyagers continued their journey into interstellar space, becoming the furthest distant human-made objects from Earth. As a time capsule for any prospective alien civilizations, this awesome spaceship carried a golden record with sounds and pictures depicting humanity. The Voyager spacecraft has been floating in space for decades, transmitting crucial data to Earth. However, owing to the Voyager's great distance, their signals got feeble and NASA lost communication with them in 2010 and 2014, respectively. But recently, something remarkable occurred. NASA has achieved a groundbreaking discovery by re-establishing contact with the Voyager spacecraft, which is presently 12 billion miles from Earth. Voyager 2 reached interstellar space in November 2018, when it left the heliosphere, the Sun's protective bubble of particles and magnetic fields surrounding the planets and the Kuiper Belt. The heliopause or border zone marks the point at which the Sun's influence ceases and the interstellar medium starts. The solar system's limit is thought to lie beyond the outer edge of the Oort cloud, a collection of tiny objects that are still subject to the Sun's gravity. The extent of the Oort cloud is unknown, although it is thought to start at 1,000 astronomical units from the Sun and stretch to over 100,000 AU. For comparison, 1 AU is the distance from the Sun to Earth. Voyager 2 will take around 300 years to reach the inner edge of the Oort cloud and 30,000 years to travel past it. The 43-year-old space probe was left alone for seven months while the radio antenna that controls it was repaired. The Deep Space Station 43 antenna near Canberra, Australia is the sole radio antenna capable of commanding the space probe. Using the DSS-43 antenna, mission controllers delivered a series of test orders to Voyager 2 which created a signal verifying the call was heard. According to NASA, the spacecraft carried out the directives without incident. Since DSS-43 went down for repairs in mid-March, mission operators have been able to receive health updates and scientific data from Voyager 2, but have yet to transmit orders to the probe. The latest contract to Voyager 2 was a test of new gear put on DSS-43, which is part of NASA's Deep Space Network, a collection of radio antenna facilities located in Canberra, Goldstone, California, and Madrid, Spain, and scattered evenly around the world. DSS-43 received two new radio transmitters as part of the renovations. One of them, used to communicate with Voyager 2, hasn't been replaced in almost 47 years. Engineers also modified the heating and cooling systems, power supply equipment, and other electronics required to operate the new transmitters. NASA believes that the successful communication with Voyager 2 was the only sign that the dish would be fully operational as expected. NASA experts have been working around the clock to decipher the data delivered by the Voyagers. The most recent messages offered priceless data regarding the spacecraft's systems and condition. This unexpected encounter allows scientists to collect new data and insights, enhancing our grasp of the solar system's furthest reaches. We had been monitoring the Voyager spacecraft regularly, looking for signs of life, and to our surprise, we got a weak signal from Voyager 1, followed by a similar signal from Voyager 2 a few days later. Voyager 2 and Voyager 1 have both flown well beyond their intended destinations. The spacecraft was designed to endure five years and study Jupiter and Saturn up close. However, as the voyage progressed, Voyager 2 was allowed to fly past the two outermost big planets, Uranus and Neptune. Remote control reprogramming offered the Voyagers additional capabilities than they had when they departed Earth, as the spacecraft sailed beyond the solar system. Their two-planet expedition expanded to four planets. Voyager 2's five-year lifetime has been extended to 43 years, making it NASA's longest-running project. Though the Pioneer 10 and 11 space probes were launched earlier, 
The Voyagers were propelled out into space considerably faster. They surpassed them, becoming the first man-made objects to depart the solar system. Despite being nearly 12 billion miles apart, both are still operational today. Part of the reason they've outlasted previous probes is because of how they're fueled. Three plutonium dioxide radioisotope thermoelectric generators are used in the probes. These RTGs are a kind of nuclear battery, driven by heat from the natural radioactive decay of plutonium-238, allowing them to endure for a long time and work even in spaces cold, dark depths. RTGs are contentious, like other highly radioactive chemicals, especially when launched aboard rockets, which sometimes burst and shower debris on Earth. As a result, RTGs are engineered in such a manner that even if a rocket burst or a satellite plummeted down to Earth, it is very improbable that anything would leak or be damaged. RTGs also offer the danger of contaminating other areas of the solar system that may hold life. One of them is Titan, one of Jupiter's moons, which may be exceedingly improbable. Still, it's a possibility that astronomers must prepare for. The Voyagers are not just space exploration pioneers, but also emblems of human curiosity and the urge to explore the unknown. Even if they never meet alien life, the information they have acquired and are continuing to bring back to Earth will inspire future generations. Voyager 1 and 2 aren't the only spacecrafts with such records. Malfunctioning space probes have recently made headlines, such as the Japanese robotic spacecraft business, iSpace Inc., which lost touch with its probe in late April after presumably crashing into the moon's surface. Another victim was recorded when China announced that it is impossible to restore communication with its Zhurong rover, which has been scratching around in the mud of Mars since May 14, 2021. It went into slumber about a year later to avoid the harsh Martian winter and its relative lack of sunshine. However, the 530-pound rover has not awoken falling short of its deadline to transmit a signal back to Earth. It's been silent since then. Beijing ultimately announced at the end of April that the Chinese rover had died, most likely owing to dust collection on its solar panels. It's a pity considering Zhurong achieved several amazing discoveries, despite outliving its projected life of 93 Earth days. It lasted 356. Zhurong recently stated, that it has discovered evidence of liquid water flowing on Mars within the past 1.4 million years, which is very recent in geologic terms. Zhurong joined several other inactive Mars robots, including NASA's Spirit and Opportunity rovers, which ceased operations after 6 years and 77 days and 14 years and 138 days respectively. Re-establishing communication with the Voyagers has sparked enthusiasm in the scientific community. It is astounding that these spacecraft, which have been in orbit for nearly four decades, can still communicate with us. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.